jobs. Show us what you Yeah, so Ain't Them Body Saints. It's a little bit different than what we've watched, I think, so far. A little heavier. It I think did. If I hadn't have read reviews halfway through, I would have probably been the Aaron about this movie. What does that mean? Does that uh, mean you hate it? I, I did. I, uh, <laughs> Oh, does do that I mean, hate everything? Hate everything that I don't personally think. <laughs> Get out of here. That's not true. Um, I I felt that it was a very stylized movie that didn't necessarily have as much substance as it did visual appeal. Um, I like to watch things. And I like to take in media and try and think of what else is going on. So I was really paying attention to the color scheme. And there were only like maybe three or four uh, scenes in the whole movie that weren't that washed out orange color. They love that twilight hour, hey? Like where the sun yeah. is just setting. That, was, just, like their, that was their dr- favorite. Drama. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it made it difficult, I guess, to kind of break it all up. Because it just felt like everything happened only at that one time. See... I think I appreciated that about the film, though. For me, when it comes to dramas, I find they're... It wasn't very dramatic. It was, I think it was, it was a pretty love, heavy. love story slash what, dra- what? drama. Best ending, though. Yeah, I, the whole I, way, I was just like... Oh. But when I say drama, I don't mean like... Thrilling drama. Yeah. Just for lack like of a better term. Sometimes people hear drama and they think it's going to be this like uh, kind of intense... Um, thing throughout where it's just gonna have all kinds of right. emoting I, I wouldn't call it that I, I would call it a drama it's I, I didn't feel like it was so much a thriller no not or at anything, all but and, um, and when you look at its categories it's like crime thriller romance right. drama we're not quite That's, sure it's a drama I, I got thrown off drama. by that because when I was reading about it I had read that it's this outlaw I guess it said love story, uh, but it said like an outlaw escapes from prison, and I'm like, right. oh, okay, here we go. No, and then I'm just, like, and then I watched it, and I, I was, I enjoyed most of it, I say, but I felt like I got like blue balls from this like action movie, supposed action from movie, the way it was like I described it. versus yeah. what it really yeah. was. I found it was kind of like flat soda. Yeah. It's still soda. It's still a love story. It's still about crime. It's right. just flat. Yeah. No, but that's what I like about it, and and that's what I. I was saying is when it comes to, to drama I like a drama that has some weight to it it's more realistic I think than a lot of drama out there some some dramas you watch and there's Hollywood dramas s- yeah Hollywood dramas where they're just there's so much going on and that person's cheating on that person and this is uh, well just, that was all so null by top. this one because they only had four four main characters yeah. I would say the bartender was a secondary character and the bounty hunters were tertiary characters yeah. at best the, I yeah. did like Ben Foster though he and remember when I said that Ben Foster has a bad guy face mm-hmm. and like everything that I've seen him in. He was adorable in this movie. Yeah. But I think he still could have been a bad guy with that face. He looked, because he's not that much older, I don't think, than you are. I don't know um, But he looked like mid, like 40s. He looked extra he, he did worn. Look it looked but like I think they he had thinned to his have hair that. out on the front. Maybe Am I they wrong? Did. They wanted to make him look like that that kind of middle aged. Well they cop. did that in Mad Men. One of the actors had to like shave his hairline back because right. they had the that's the progression of his ages. But I I, I was really interested how subdued that he was, especially the last time yeah. we watched Ben Foster. He's very settled. Yeah. Um everything was very, very restrained, and I think that Rooney Mara just crushed it. I read a yeah. really fantastic review of her or not review, but um I guess I, I almost input. didn't recognize her, honestly. Like I knew it was her. Because she looked her. like a plain Jane from the South. And did that voice, did that accent, spot on, mm-hmm. yeah, like, to the T? Ben did, Foster, yeah. going back to him a little bit, the reason why I think he's so good is because I don't think it matters what 
I watch him in, he embodies the role that he is playing. He's he's a method actor, and he, I would say, like the best method actors out there, um, Dustin Hoffman, and we could name some others that we might disagree on, but he he takes the role on fully. And you, that's evidence, actually, if you watch him in uh, interviews about his films. He, usually the interviews are done during filming or, or right after filming for promotion. And in the interviews, he's in that character. Like, he embodies that. He has a southern accent if he's Well, no, I don't know movie. if he does that. But you can see, like, I watched him uh, do an interview for the film Lone Survivor. Oh. And they cut the interview between questions because he's emotionally losing it in the interview he's still in that place yeah he, he basically starts crying in the moment because it's it's so heavy the content and the and the character that he had to take on that it carries over into the interview right and so that's what i love about him and i really think in you know as his character he really embodied that role he took it on 100 percent. he was like rooney mari mara he was 100% unbelievable but or believable but I that's how I feel about the whole cast of this film and that's part of the reason why I think I thought it was so good is because all of the characters Casey Affleck is another one of those actors his brother Ben sucks dinks but Casey he was a excellent fantastically and, believable bullshit person he, yeah he was I such hated a him dick. so much yeah. he was great oh yeah yeah, yeah he yeah. Re- I was waiting the whole movie I was waiting for this epic showdown between Casey Affleck and Ben Foster like they were building the second it kind of introduced them to each other I'm yeah. like oh this Seems is like gonna it, yeah. end in a bloodbath and it kind of did but uh, it was with a random group of people who they never hunters. really explain I, re- I heard they were I read they were bounty hunters. I feel like, again, and I stated this at the very, very beginning of the show, my digestion of this film would have been much different if I hadn't have, if I'd have just taken it in as a standalone piece of media. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things I did read was, re- did read, was <laughs> as you go through the movie, your allegiances shift and you, you pull for different characters and you, you think one thing's going to happen, but then something else does. So I never, I feel like that primed me to never get payoff where which also prepared me to be so satisfied with the ending i felt like everything tied up really nice the worst thing for me would have just been to never hear from the bounty hunters again to have casey affleck just out there and rooney mara and ben foster never really figure their business out and sylvie's just like i like birthdays and kitties yeah no i think you're right though and and again i think that underlies what i what i love about these types of dramas why i prefer them is because they don't always end like a fairy tale. They don't. They don't. I don't always think end the dramas well. normally do. That's kind of what makes them dip. Well, I guess it depends what kind. But I think a right. good piece of original media doesn't. It doesn't check all the boxes, and that's what whether or not you're happy with it, or whether or not you're satisfied. The fact that you are left with a feeling at all is what makes it successful. Yeah, and I, and I think there's that kind of through the whole film. Uh, but but I liked. Um, that's the other thing that I really appreciated about it the whole time was that you don't really know why why they were in that shootout in the first place. That's, that was the get, first thing that I wrote down. Well, yeah. I, I, that made me I get why they're not trying. trust the yeah. whole thing. You kind of get an indicator of it because it is placed in the past. Where it doesn't really give us a year, but you kind of get an indicator of it that um, Keith Carradine's um, character... The old he's, guy. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. either he's either a rum like a. a I thought he was runner. the dead guy's dad, or like maybe yeah. like the patriarch of their little crime family, just yeah. from some of the ways. Yeah, that he was the dead. Later. He was the dead guy's dad. Oh, okay. for sure. Um, I think that's that's clear right out of the gate. He he calls him son at one point. I think when he's in the hospital or something. I think. Yeah. I think. I don't remember. I think no. I think it is his son because he's standing over him and then he's in the hospital bed. Yeah. Oh, but then no. when they're talking in the in the in the antique store right. and he says, "Weren't these so and so's toys?" I remember playing this as a kid. Yeah. Like he basically adopted Rooney Mara and oh, Casey yeah. Affleck's mm. characters in, but I think that was his real son, though. The best 
uh, evidence you get of that is when he calls him son in the hospital room. I don't even remember the hospital. It's when like was that? It's like very brief, like right after the shootout. Oh, yeah, really okay. Yeah. That might have been when I was scrolling, trying to get some <laughs> extra info, because it just... Because you're like, why, is it, why are they shooting? I don't understand. Well, I kept <laughs> waiting for it to have some sort of like callback right. at the A end. flashback. Yeah, because yeah. I knew that they were kind of shifting through times and stuff. What I did find interesting from the perspective that they did come through was every time that Bob wrote a letter. Also, what the fuck kind of a name is Bob Muldoon? <laughs> it Bob sounds, Muldoon. It sounds so kind of Irish, it but dates so it, I southern. I well, yeah, it, it was obviously it. from like the seventies or so. Yeah, Maybe that, the late sixties. Keep least, it like least. very ambiguous with the setting, like which it's makes almost, perfect sense. Yeah, I think that it really it helps make it atmospheric, but not too specific. You you get like the vapors right. of that without having to nail down a physical idea. But I did find it interesting how Bob, when Bob writes the letters, you hear you hear him writing the letter. You know he's narrating his letter. Mm -hmm. But it's not until later when Keith Carradine is reading Rooney Mara's letter that it's heard. Like when she's writing it, there's nothing there. And I thought that was really really telling because you had to wait that extra while longer they to figure out what exactly wait. she was going to be doing. And so much of her character was just this woman between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, I loved you once, and you did this thing for me. That's great. But look where I am now. Do you know? And she well, she spills. She says it all in the letter. And yeah. I feel like hearing that really paid off the tone and the look on her face. And I don't know if that's just her eyebrows or if that's like the face she was making for that character. But it worked because everything that she had been doing and saying and how she had been acting for me had full satisfactory payoff once the letter was narrated because it all just made perfect sense yeah because it would have been way too fluffy to be like oh oh my god bob you're here let's go great Bullshit. <laughs> mind you i do appreciate that they reinforced though very uh slightly that they reinforced her appreciation of the fact that ben foster's character um would be a better provider and they do she indicate towards the yeah. end that he's going to take on that role yeah and the kid like when he grabs the kid i shed a tear at the end yeah when he takes yeah. when he holds the kid on the front deck while she deals with uh bob and the kid's just wrapped up in him because the kid doesn't know what's going on the kid no. has doesn't know who doesn't this guy know who is, is. But what um, effects? He looked so hag at Bob at the very end, just as, you know, Sylvie gets picked yeah. up and taken away. I feel like even in the the seconds from when it was just uh, Bob and Ruth to when it was Bob, Ruth, and Sylvie, just that, oh, that yeah. one second. And he didn't even have to say anything. You no, could just, he, like, see it. Yeah, yeah, but it looked like, and I, I don't know if they did make an effort to change the makeup just a little bit, or if it was just his face emoting, oh. but it looked so much more hollow great. and haggard, mm -hmm. and just, like, every last little thing that he had has just been sucked out of him, all by his own decision, because what the fuck, you know? Yeah. I have an interesting note about, and I don't know, I I'm interested to hear what you guys took away from this because I don't remember the hospital scene. So obviously I'm not the most reliable <laughs> short remembering scene. person. <laughs> it was quick. But when Bob and when Bob gets chased down the hill from the the shack where the shootout happened where he's been staying that barn. Mm -hmm. So he gets chased down the hill by the bounty hunter and then they're wrestling and stuff and then the guy shoots and like Bob tackles him down or something and then the guy that goes to shoot again and Bob has another gun like so Bob has the gun mm -hmm. and then the bounty hunter pulls another gun and he says wait god damn it and the guy shoots so Bob has to shoot him that made it sound like maybe he didn't elect to yeah. make that decision like it was born out of necessity but then not even a minute later when it gets up to the fucking truck he leaves that guy to die instead of shooting him the guy yeah, he because just shot. he doesn't want to kill him finally. So you're just gonna you you. S I thought it was a real contradictory set of actions to be like, wait, goddammit, don't shoot me. Maybe just so they can have a talk and he can figure out what's going on. Right. But if you, well, now that I say it out loud, I suppose it makes more sense because if he's being yeah. self-serving by saying, wait, don't shoot me, who are you? Then once you find out that these people are here to get you, yeah. of course, you're not going to... It didn't... You are going to make them suffer. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go back to what uh, we were talking about a little bit before, where I said I, th I get the feeling that they were uh, booze runners or drug runners. I lean towards booze runners just because I get the feeling from the setting when you look at the trucks 
Oh, mind you, in that scene, the truck might have been newer. It never was says. But they could have been moonshiners. At just, any rate. Yeah, it just says that they're running. Yeah, he means. says, wait. He shoots him. Yeah. Um, and then he leaves him to die. He doesn't want to kill anyone. Bob doesn't want to kill anyone. I did get anyone. that impression. And but he it never seems... shot. He never shot Ben Foster. That was Rooney Mara. Was the well, no, no, so but that's doesn't... besides the point. I felt like to, to shoot someone... Well, I can't even... I'm frustrated now because the feelings I have about him and the guy in the truck, if you don't want to kill anyone because, what, you're humane? Because you're compassionate? Because you're soft? Then why would you leave someone who's already been banged up and shot guttering with blood in their throat to suffer? Would it not be compassionate and humane to shoot said person? He's not going anywhere. What fucking difference does it he make? He had flashes of goodness in him, but overall, I don't... I just... Yeah. Oh, and he right. could yeah. survive. He could yeah. survive. I understand it. There's a finality in it that I think some people find challenging. A lot of people... Like, I would argue with pets. Sometimes people have a dog or something that they put through surgery after surgery after surgery and they not keep them alive down. forever and Ever and and then they do everything but that no. they can to uh, keep this thing as comfortable as they can until they have to put it down, or maybe hopefully it just dies in its sleep so that I never have to put mm -hmm. it down. You don't have to be the one. I don't to pull know that. that. I don't know that that's any more humane, right? So. I can understand that, whether I agree with it or not, I can understand that the finality of putting that last bullet in his head that kills him is not what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. This way, at least, I mean, Bob is a pretty weak man, really, because yeah, yeah. his sentence was five years to life. Five I read years conflicting things. I thought it said five, but then I read something else that said it was 25. No, in, I thought in the he film, escaped after five, in and the he film, was supposed to be away for 25. Well, somebody, one of us better figure this business out. I was positive it said five years to life. I thought that's what it said on the title, because when they were flashing through the newspaper clippings, right? Oh. But when I was looking into it more, it said 25. What did? I remember seeing 25 somewhere. Yeah? But yeah. I thought I saw five years to life. The point is, I five think... Five to life? Is life 25 years? Maybe everybody's right. Well, he never killed him, right? So 25 years to life is a pretty long sentence for... No, five years to life. And if life could be 25 years, then I stand by. We're all right. Well, life in the southern U.S. is likely life. Also, how good is her, that chick's lawyer if she got, like, off scot-free from being in, like, a shootout with the police? With the police, Cause She she's, was just there. She's they yeah. just there. told her to be there. That's the thing, though, they right? They talked about that. Especially in back reports. in the day. Mm -hmm. You know, you could really just, oh, I didn't mean to. Oh, he made goodness. me. I couldn't yeah. believe it. I was just, I was just overcome. I just loved him so much. I didn't know he was such a bad well, person. This is how you get out of a speeding that? ticket. Yeah, in her and Ben Foster's conversation in the house, they actually talk about that when she says, she kind of indicates to him that it didn't happen like he thought it yeah. happened. Yeah. Those police reports. Did you I, read I what I said? Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't just a little girl in a, over yeah. her head. She yeah. says that. And he oh. says, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, I read them and and I expect that a lot of else happened. They don't go into the details she and just, neither of yeah. them seem to want to, but and they both know that it's the more the subtlety of the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel like the the aesthetic tone and kind of like the the story part is all about subtlety, but I also found uh, an inherent theme to be hope uh, for such a stark movie. Yeah. They hope that they get away with Whatever. I put bank robbery just because they had all that money. I didn't know what it really was. But it sounds, it makes more sense that it would be something illicit like rum running or drugs if all of the bounty hunters came from a single person and they all knew Keith Carradine's character. So it all must be but within they didn't. the same. They knew who he was because he, he was a crime boss for that area. That's what when, I'm saying. Yeah. When, oh, when, they didn't know him personally. They don't have to if they're subservants. You're told okay, to go sorry, do something. Okay, sorry, I just thought you said if they all knew. So I they was walked just going in and they recognized the him, I think. That and he enough that he could person. be like, y'all don't come back here. So obviously yeah. there are they are lower levels of whoever sent them. Yeah. Keith Carradine's character. Yeah. Well, and he was so confused, right? Because the guy who shoots him, the guy that we were talking about before, Bob goes, I don't even know who you are. And that confused him. And he's like, I don't know who you are either. He's like, he's oh just doing a job, right? I loved that scene mm -hmm. so much. Like, I've never seen you before. Why are you after me? You fucking think that really you haven't pissed anybody right. off? Because Keith Carradine <laughs> told you. What was his real character's name? He's insanely naive. 
Bob. Well, he's unbelievable. He's a naive. small town Scarab crook, I think. Carradine's Scarab. He Scarab? side Scarab. side note, um, he's also in the first season of Fargo, and in yes! that show, he he's talks so about good. how he's been sitting on his yeah. front deck with a shotgun. So when I saw him sitting on his front <laughs> deck, oh gosh, I was so excited, thinking he'd have a shotgun with him. And also, well, he didn't, but then he did. He and did have he, a rifle. His brother did. died. Yeah. Um, with his balls tied up in a knot doing autoerotic asphyxiation. And I just in, thought that I'd point that out. In, I was going to say, I don't remember that scene, but you it, mean real life. But real in life. Fargo, do you remember Poor when guy. he's always playing with the with the rope? Yes. Even in yes. the second one when it's being played by... The younger guy. Yeah. Uh, from... Patrick something? Yes. From uh, The Watchmen? Insidious. Phantom of the Opera? No. One of those horror movies. Yeah. The Conjuring, yes. I think. Yeah, I the Carradines are a no, great... Is it not? They're making a third one of whatever he's in. Yeah. That the Carradines are a great <laughs> movie family. But he's a great actually. actor, who you're talking about. Surprisingly <laughs> decent. I love the things that I have seen him in, because I first knew him from the Phantom of the Opera. Also, oh. I mean, Jerry Butler's been in that, and he's been in all kinds of interesting movies. Up and downs? Yes, yes, uh, mostly downs. Mostly, mostly downs. downs. Uh, Do you know, you know what I remember him first from? Which one? Uh, the Long Riders. Which one? Who? Keith Carradine. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, all, all of the Carradine. <laughs> and you and I have just been like forever. All, all of the Carradine brothers, actually. The Long Riders was this excellent uh, Southern, um, not Southern, I don't know why I say Southern, but this Western movie um, from 1980. And it's all brothers. It's like... It's like a the, band of brothers? Well, no, it's all brother actors in it. I stand by my statement. They're literally... Oh, it's about Jesse James? <laughs> yeah, well, J the James brothers and the Youngers, and they actually uh, used brother actors to play the characters. So they had all three oh, characters. Deleted scenes there. They had James and Stacy yeah. Keach. They had Dennis and Randy Quaid. Oh boy! Um, wow. Christopher and Nicholas Guest. So they had. It was all. Wasn't all there brothers. another Jesse James movie where there was brother actors in it? Um, the one with the guy from Mighty Ducks. What? Estevez? Emilio Estevez. He was in a Jesse James movie. Yeah. With. The Quick and the Dead. With the no, drug no, it's, addict uh, brother, the, uh, young Charlie Sheen. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm so bad with names no, no, right no, now. Between the two of us, we'll figure yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah, they were in a outlaw movie about Jesse James. Tombstone. No. 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 Well, that's no, all no. I young it Guns. Was, young Guns. Yes. Yeah, as you yeah. can tell, this is not my genre. What, what, was it? Were they both in it? I don't remember Emilio. Oh shit! Maybe. I would love it if Charlie Sheen Charlie had a bit. Damn it! Oh. I've never seen Maybe Charlie was... in a western. <laughs> okay, and then also Casey Affleck was in a Jesse James movie called oh. The Assassination of Jesse James, Such a good which movie is too. another good one. One of the few. I've never heard of half of these movies. Is it because <laughs> I, like I don't westerns. have a dick? Maybe. Maybe because you don't like westerns. I don't know. Do you like westerns? I've never seen a western. Well, I've only seen Blazing Saddles. Westerns so. are high. Highly underrated. Highly underrated. I love westerns. How did my hand clap more in your mic than mine? I don't know. Echoes. <laughs> um, this is quality programming. So, I mean, overall, You're you guys like the movie or what? I, I it was fine. think it was good enough. I, good. Oh, I, feel, I feel like it was, they took out the a really good love story out of this grand epic movie that it should have been, like this this huge, more backstory movie, and they kind of condensed it down to the, the drama love story portion of it, which was good in itself, but I, mean, I just wanted more. I felt like that was the underlier, and, and that's what it was... I don't know. You got to take a movie for what it was meant to be. You know, if if we were this talking, this was supposed to be vague and artistic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If we, if we were talking about like a Hollywood summer blockbuster, you expect it to be epic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like I mean, when you say that, and I think of Dances with Wolves, right? Everyone talks about Dances with Wolves. It's a super long movie. Back in the VHS days, it was on two VHS tapes. Oh, just like Whoa. Titanic. Um, yeah. And and people talked about how great it was and it's a lot of nothing that doesn't mean it's not good no it doesn't it doesn't the prairies but you are a expect lot of nothing. it to be this long epic film like when i grew up watching epics it was um the ten commandments and ben-hur those are the big double vhs you know original epics cleopatra these films and they were epic 
They were for literally three hours. Epic. Yeah, they were epic. Um, Does Dances epic with have Wolves to was mean long though. No, no, no. Dances with Wolves was a good film. I keep hearing Dancing with Wolves. Find. I said Dances with Wolves. I know. I'm hearing Dancing, and it's making your talking a Danzig. lot better. Dan, 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 Dancing. 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 Half, I'm already halfway through drink number two, and you guys know that my drinks are about three drinks in one glass. So this oh, is about geez. to get a lot more political. Yeah, well, I've got four different no, liquors in my glass. <laughs> uh, I thought the movie was quite great because it. I think the key for me in a film like that, what I look for, is this kind of constant. Um, it caught my interest throughout the whole film. I, I wanted to see where it went. Um, I wanted to see where it went, but I wasn't interested. I liked. <laughs> That's interesting. That's odd. <laughs> You're like, I want to see how this ends, but damn it, I'm bored. I, I like that. That is exactly what happened. Like, I had a hard time. Like, I think part of the reason that I kept looking up information on my phone was to give me more of a reason, was to give me something more to be invested in. Mm. I felt like maybe some of it just needed to be sanded off so I had some grip. Right. Because it was just so. It didn't help in that my you hands. couldn't grab onto a character either, because half the time you're like With, cheer, cheering it, for some and but not. But that so many was kind of interesting moments, in a weirdish way, yeah, weird. kind of. I felt, I guess because I didn't have a lot of care for any individual character, some of the right. things that happened just seemed really out of place. But there were so many great little moments too, like when, when he gets that guy to stop in his wicked sports car. Which, by the way, confirms now definitively with me that this was not set during Prohibition because that was like a 70s two-door I thought that we decided coupe. it was in the late 60s. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it so, was a throwback to like those Prohibition. Yeah, yeah it felt, honestly, it it felt it was like so they were gritty. booze runners, yeah. which means they only could have, if it was booze, they were, they were moonshiners, which is still legal. Anyways, it doesn't matter what the crime is, and I think that's why they didn't tell you what the crime is because that's inconsequential not and that's inconsequential you but Rami Malek is the guy in the car he's that weird looking guy have you ever seen Night oh, at Mr. the Mr. Robot right yeah Mr. Yeah, Robot yeah. Night at the Museum he plays the uh, Ramses or whatever one. I don't even know what part you guys are talking about the guy where he he's all bloody he's and all he bloody. stops this the car after and he's the like shoot drive out. me oh, to my house oh yeah yeah, yeah. so he's yeah. driving with the guy in the car and the you guy realizes family? yeah the, <gasps> the guy realizes that he's not gonna hurt him the guy realizes that he's what not gonna hurt there? him continue yeah the guy realizes that he's not gonna hurt him does he and yeah I think okay for sure he does go ahead so then they continue driving and he says tell your daddy who i am or who yes. you met today <laughs> and the guy goes who did i meet today and he doesn't know and i think that's such an excellent that, point in the film i think they that's the, the second or third time that that happens with ben or with um, casey, casey affleck, affleck yeah. and, and showing how narcissistic and like he wants to be known like when he's yeah. in the bar and what does he say in the bar where he's like oh they open the doors for me because i'm the devil and right. they're just like they respect me and then he's like didn't you like jump in a garbage truck or something yeah. and like so just, good yeah. that, that was times. that was one of the i think two or three moments where I legitimately connected and emoted with this movie because it was hilarious. He has this he has this kind of um, um, fantasized image of himself. Romanticized. Romanticized, that's exactly it. He has this romanticized version of himself in his own head. It's only in his head. Mm -hmm. And he, and, and I love that even you know, he says, oh, and as soon as she sees me... She's going to feel me coming down the street. She's female right. came, coming down the street. Oh, All that on. kind of stuff. Yeah. He's got... He's so romanticized about it. And even her, like, she does love him. There's no question about that, even at the Just end. Just because you love someone doesn't mean they're the best choice. Exactly. You have to be practical. And I think that, you he's know... He's the only one in that mindset. The only yeah, one. And, absolutely. And that brings it more into reality, which is what I like, because you see a lot of those movies. And... They are criminals elevated to this glorious mm -hmm. status, and he's not. I think that he's really the personification of the small town good old boy. You know, where he's always got that person who's got his back, and he's always getting his buddies together, you know, and, and his buddies are always taking the fall, and it's totally fine because he's the king. Because he Well, you're fucking dead. <laughs> Do you think it would have been Sorry. better if Pop was the. Uh, 
the soundtrack. soundtrack. I, I don't think Pup had any place in this movie. It was the movie was so quiet at some points where uh, I actually had to turn on closed cap. I was just gonna say last week you mentioned how the version of Logan's Run you watched had the worst audio levels ever. I contest that this movie has legitimately the worst levels and, and, ever. And was it stylistic? Were they trying to make it like super quiet so you're like well it could have been watch very it in a settled <laughs> setting. You're it could have to- been. I watched it at nine o'clock at night in an empty house, and I still had to ride the volume. Now I don't know really? if it's because my hearing—I don't hear low levels. Mm-hmm. That could be it. Maybe I should get that looked at. But I really did feel like this yeah. one just jacked all around, and it was unacceptable. It was, it was whispering. It was like, I got, I gotta see my girl. I gotta get down. And I felt like, yeah. like a lot of the man. I can't even. I can't even. I really voice. didn't feel that way, guys. <laughs> but in must have just been the bassy tones because between them talking softly the way yeah. the southerners kind of do and having those real low down male voices this is exactly it you know i don't always pick up this kind of tone with my voice is clearly the bassiest of the three of us and i'm pretty <laughs> sure it cuts through everything yeah but you're not you as edit it out if only i could <laughs> you do if only you i do. could <laughs> have you not listened to the last episode where i left my godliness in there you're welcome <laughs> but pup 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 very <laughs> they are very brash they're gonna go in your face and they're gonna and they're gonna punch you right, right on your nose. I, really I would feel love that for way. Oh, with a newspaper. With a newspaper. I would love to for this <laughs> yeah. to be remembered for the next album. This exchange, what you just said. Yeah. Remember it for what? For the next record. Oh, okay. Oh, the yeah. one. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Exciting. So they're not necessarily super, super heavy, no, per se. Like but some of the songs are the, up tempo. I don't find them heavy at all. I no. feel like they're. I feel like they're a little bit more modern version of some forty one. <laughs> <laughs> they're punk, oh and boy. I kept that theme, but not some forty one. Go I'm, hard. I'm gonna. I'm gonna jump on this bandwagon. Break it out. The, I think the start of the album was was much more in your face, and then it does kind of get poppier, I guess, as you're going through it, the middle and maybe the end. But um, the first two tracks, bam. The there was a track in the middle where it's kind of slow, Yukon. That one was that one was just good, iconically because, Canadian. Because it was the imagery, it was too right? Canadian. And the see again, we're going back to where the lyrics are not the strong point of this album. The, no. He. How many breakup songs do you need? Yeah, he sings about himself a lot and about how his like childhood buddies and stuff. And it, there was not Hello, a lot. Hello, Reservoir. Of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Childhood buddies again. It's you know, ju- it's juvenile. It's juvenile music but it was Maybe so lyrically. much fun though i think because you showed me this band a while ago i think i showed we, you a single yeah yeah the reservoir right right Take them to the reservoir. and i remember watching the video and thinking it was more aggressive but the video is kind of aggressive i guess they and that's the what they're all bloody and stuff right but then when i listen to the audio by itself yeah. it just sounds like a punk song just like a generic punk song it remember the, uh it might have been a few episodes ago now yeah the sum 41 episode where i started singing like i want to jump in a lake sun come out in the beach in the summer yeah it felt like that to me just like a little bit heavier and a little bit more modern like it just it just <laughs> felt like it, it's We're just more generic throwing punk. our hands up just it's all more right generic punk. i'm not gonna to defend the lyrics and the the validity of this music because it's not deep. I think we can sidestep the lyrics. Yeah. Musically, it was better. Instrumentally, it was better. Because they have those, like, really, especially during the first song, which I think is probably the best song on the album, Guilt Trip, where he it just kind of starts, like, and then in those gaps where it throws the feedback at you, too, where it's just constantly kind of coming heavy, strong, and just, just good. But would you call this... Like I would still consider this just punk. Oh yeah, I wouldn't definitely. call it. I wouldn't call it post-hardcore punk. I wouldn't call it. Um, I would just call it punk. Like this is just straight. This is punk. just straight up punk. Punk. But not even punk like eighties punk. Like it's just it's just punk. It's yeah. Just punk. They're not doing anything brand new here. No. Like they're taking some elements from newer uh, punk genres. Right. Punk 
influenced genres and putting it into their sound, but it's still just punk. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it, not bad. I didn't listen to it. Like, some 41, I would, just got tired of listening to it. <laughs> this I didn't really. This right. I could just throw on at any time and, and, and play the album. Hear it. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't hate it. Right. Um, and I didn't feel as against the lyrics as I did for some 41 <laughs> like some 41 that's a different story this was definitely without a doubt it was more interesting to listen to it was I, it was good but i wouldn't call it more than background music i like the lead guitarist because he's just so weird like he's not a punk guitarist almost right like you got the lead singer who is clearly just kind of punking it up but then the lead guitarist he'll do those like weird like almost jazzy leads randomly in these songs and it, it mm. seems so out of place but but takes it away from traditional punk which is kind of interesting to me yeah yeah and hey. meg this is almost just about the cusp of my tolerance for modern punk music oh uh at heart i am a gutter punk okay um i like a lot of new york punk uh, something yeah. the i like the and and i got some some conflicts i like the rawness of the traditional three chords but i cannot stand the sweetness of it yeah, yeah. so i appreciate it's not hardcore it. no it's, it's not, not harsh core like no. i, I like i'm an angry person yeah. i like my shit fucking angry yeah. but this was just on the cusp of acceptable where it layered up several things that um that I've come to know out of especially the Canadian punk rock scene. Mm. Like my husband has super deep ties to the Calgary punk scene. So oh. we, over our relationship, I've gotten involved in that to a certain degree. Uh, and I felt like it was just, it had just the bare minimum requirements of things that engaged me mm. to balance out the things I didn't like. I don't like gang vocals. Yeah. I don't like harmonies. Yes, the gang vocals. Fuck <laughs> I don't like the technical guitar. You know, I don't want... I don't want that my fucking music. That was too... That was so poppy. You you hit the nail on the head with that really good. I don't think it's poppy, though. I don't think it's poppy at all. I think that... I think it was poppy. And I think it depends on your context. That's a poppy hook. I think it depends on your context there in because it reminded me a lot of socal punk oh. i don't fucking like southern california punk Ooh, and i know right poppy. wow well that's what i'm saying though just because it is to you and i it's got that poppy sound i feel like to call it pop is to discredit it because there are huge monumental genre breaking things that have come out of the southern california sound I don't like them, but, but I know that a lot of people do. So why can you not pay homage to that? And I felt like this, I don't know why I felt the obligation to give this more credence than I did some 41. It could be because these guys are just starting out. Maybe I feel like they need to have some indie cred. Maybe because I don't know all of the bullshit thereafter. Maybe because they weren't 13 tracks in 32 minutes. Right. It was these, short, wasn't but, it? But they said there was variety. There was different tones. There was yeah. different yeah. paces. There were things where I could really become engaged with the lyrical content. Mm. Reservoir, I didn't have one of those growing up but i can still appreciate everybody going Good. down to your area you know get all your fucking friends get a fucking two four let's go down to x these guys didn't have a reservoir either in my town it was a gully it's kind not of like, pretty yeah, true. we have like shitty little lakes around here that are kind of like right? reservoirs yeah um so it had <laughs> just going, enough going to sandy beach yeah <laughs> no it had uh, just uh, enough we do to have keep a lake on the spaceship by the way i feel like um <laughs> i feel like we've forgotten well, that we're on a spaceship hey man i don't want to stay on this fucking and ship all the fucking yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up here. Everybody's the, got their um, favorite places. Have you been to the ice fields in Jasper? That's oh, where gorgeous. Go I think yeah. your earlier statement, you said, um, you know, you like, you're angry. How did you phrase that? You're. I like angry music for like angry, angry people. Angry music, <laughs> angry people, and and I feel that way too. I I get into. I like to get amped up. I like to get mad when I'm listening to music. I like to get angry. Remember this, I also like the next to, album. I also like to get depressed a little bit. I think that's why I liked Violator so much because mm -hmm. it just brought me down. Which I still just can't I get on that. board with. But I... And then on the other hand, you know, I, I like the very artistic stuff because that takes me to a different emotional place. 
that's my problem I think with these types of bands like Pop and, and Some 41 they're and so, that kind of punk is they don't take me anywhere so, like, emotionally almost nowhere almost friend oriented like let's but get I all my friends together. and I don't think there's anything wrong happy. with that you know I've seen so many shows like maybe this is music for live shows well, that's too. what I've read I've read that, that like, great yeah they're show. okay um, you hear them on the record they're okay but man when they go live it's but like, I could feel that live like yeah. I could st- I stood in my kitchen and I listened to it and I was almost immediately transported to some of the dive bars that I've been to to the sweaty right. stringy haired mosh pits where you've got guitarists fucking doing like <laughs> jack jumps because no. they're just so excited to be there they're not getting paid yeah. they've been driving for six hours right. but this is what they want to do yeah. but I think that that's I think a good that came point. across oh, yeah, I, I think, think that's so. a good point and I think actually where I feel like that falls apart and why I consider a band like Nirvana to be so groundbreaking in a way explain that don't give me that face watch me okay (laughs) Uh oh this is a discussion for another day Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. the 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 production of the album I think outpaces the the feeling that you'd get at a live show oh yeah for so much going on it came across so cleanly you know there's all of those layers it's too clean because i feel like live it would be a good show live i'd probably be 100 percent into it and then on the album they clean it up and i feel like i could listen to it on their local radio i bet like his screaming too live because at one point he said uh, they did 450 shows in two years so he was just like all out. day every day yeah. yeah and he he got like a cyst on his vocal cord because he screams so yeah. much yeah. that his doctor told him he's like what he said if this tour doesn't kill you i will because uh, he was so mad at him for yeah. like, like not yeah. Get, yeah don't clean it up so much why do you need to produce why do you need to overproduce things I, th- I feel like a lot of bands do that and i think they do it for the radio i think I mean, obviously, some singles, they're made for time on the radio. They've got to fit a certain time frame. They have to be a certain audio quality, et cetera, and so on. So they do it for money for radio play. Um, this radio is my producer face. on the nose. There. <laughs> I need yeah, to yeah. take a picture because this is the face that I make when I really have something to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that, that's the signal? To, okay. Finger on the nose. Meg's up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, in kind of following along with why clean it up so much, I wonder because that kind of makes it come across like the the target of their sound should be that raw liveness, and I wonder if you're is it venue dependent? Like I I love dive bar shows because yeah, you those can are just the best. wreck it. Yeah, you know? right. nothing sounds good, Remember but that everyone's bar we punched holes in the walls. They were yeah. de- demolished. Wonder it Bar after. Edmonton. That was fun. Yeah. Where? Wonder Bar. Yeah, it was the last oh. show that they yeah. were playing in there before they renovated it. And we came in right at the very end <laughs> oh, of the show. Really? Yeah, and so they were just, just trashing it. Punching holes through walls and stuff <laughs> with the band. Aaron and walks I was, up to the guy. He's like, hey, can I punch some holes too? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's adorable. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah. So I went home with bloody knuckles that night. It was nice. That's a good night. The, <laughs> a quick story about that. The, the band. Side note. The band is... is punching some holes in walls and I'm going look guys you just got to follow through with it because they're having a tough time honestly I can't remember what the band was but they're having a tough time getting through the drywall so I'm, I'm like okay guys I'll just I'll give you a quick pointer here so I was like an idiot um, thinking I was I don't know you were off. super mad I don't know, was I showing off I don't know this is how you punch through a wall so then and I, I've been doing it and then I go to punch through the wall and I hit a fucking stud right in the so stud the, oh. <laughs> so I punch it I'm like here guys this is how you make a hole in the wall and then I punch the stud Thunk. and then my hand hurt like a motherfucker yeah. and it swelled right up you know, I was all bloody I punched some more holes after yeah. that but I felt it was the emotional pain that hurt me more than the hand because oh, your pride get my pride hurt. got hurt because I was oh, trying to show these no. guys how to punch a hole in the wall. That's why I never try to show anybody how to do anything. No, you but. shouldn't. Yeah, it's an embarrassing story. I still think back on it and still feel embarrassed about it. And 
I don't know why. I don't know those guys personally, and I but you highly, know. I highly doubt that those guys in that band are like. Remember that no. idiot? Oh my god! But what they if don't. they are? They, what they if don't. that was like they the don't. one good thing that happened on the tour? Like the next day, the van broke down, hey guys, and they remember, all had to max out their credit cards trying idiot? to get this guy that the to get back to wherever they're from, like fucking Halifax or something. All right? Can you? I wonder what the punk scene in Halifax is like. It's. I don't know. Probably very probably humid. <laughs> <laughs> Probably pretty centralized. Like, even the one in Calgary is very, and I say this lovingly, very incestuous. Ooh, and I would imagine yeah. if you're all the way out in the Maritimes, you would still be, you'd have a lot of that crossover. Calgary punk scene, I'm curious about a little bit. Because growing, well, well when I was growing up anyways, I'd go to shows in Calgary. I'd go to shows in, some shows in Red Deer. There weren't a ton. I'd go to shows in Edmonton. I feel like Red Deer is like the odd person. You'd think that it would be the next one. It but actually, there's not a lot in Red Deer. Uh, right now, I think one of the one of the best bands coming up in Alberta right now that's that's making a decent impact is the Dusty Tucker Band, and they're kind of like a punk Southern rock hardcore thing, and they're out of Red Deer. But anyways, the um, shout out for Dusty Tucker. I mean, we're allowed to I, shout out. I rock anyone. that yeah. shirt a lot. Well, that's not the name. No one in the band is named that. The band's name is Dusty. Too bad. Tucker. Anyways, oh my god, can we, can we no, no, can we just stop for a sec? You know how I've been foreshadowing the next album? Yeah. yeah. Dusty. 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 Like Dusty Rhodes, the wrestler? No, no, just Dusty. That's all. I'm done. Continue. Um, I'm when worst. I was growing up going to punk shows, or rock shows, or really any shows, I'd go to like a Deftones concert, for example. I'd see the Deftones in Edmonton, and the crowd would be ridiculously into the show. Then I'd go to a show. I saw the Deftones at McEwen Hall. I've seen them a few times. I, I saw them at McEwen Hall, and the crowd fucking sucked. <laughs> and, and that's not that's not it. Like most shows that I saw in Calgary, and I saw a number because my brothers lived in that area. The crowds were fucking garbage. But then I'd go to a show. Is it because they were too cool for school? And the crowds would wreck the fucking place. Like I just thought Edmonton was the best for shows. And I and in that era, I remember reading an article that. Um, in one of those years, Edmonton actually surpassed Rio de Janeiro for the most live concerts in a in a year. Wow! Yeah, it was, it's a good concert venue. It's a place that people want to play because the crowds are really good and the crowds come out to see the shows. So yeah. Edmonton always just felt like if I had a choice between the two, um, Edmonton seemed like the better. Well, it's a lot closer music scene. Yeah, but not just closer. The crowd makes a, a bit of a difference, yeah. I think. The crowd and is huge when you're talking live music. We were talking about that before. Like, if, yeah. if you're in a crappy crowd, it's not nearly as fun as, like, a super energetic yeah. into it. Terrible. Right? Particularly yeah. in, like, hardcore and punk. Yeah. That's where Edmonton really seemed to thrive. Whereas Calgary, if you're fucking Garth Brooks, you're going to sell out and the crowd's going to be phenomenal. But I, that's just what I felt growing up as I experienced those different shows. You didn't think there was a lot of energy in the live crowds in Yeah. Calgary? The heavier bands, the heavier shows, the more punk-flavored stuff, Edmonton just seemed to be the better place to see those shows. It seemed to be a better draw for the crowds. Hmm. Um, Calgary didn't seem to support those shows as well. So it surprises me. It almost surprised me when you said... I, I know well the Calgary punk well, she, scene because I just probably didn't been to a lot. there was a Calgary punk scene. Well, to be fair, a lot of the shows that we did go to were in Edmonton just because it's closer, but there are a lot of contacts for the grind in the Calgary uh -oh. scene because one of our correspondents is from there. That's where Chris is from. Uh, and I think that, you know, it might have to do with location as well. I mean, Calgary, yeah, is is the is an epicenter for sure. It's, it's a metropolis, especially now. But Edmonton is like right in that U shape of crossing uh, and and the the town Lloyd Minster is the same it's right on the border so if you're going to Edmonton you have to go through that town to get to Saskatoon so you'd think there would be a lot of live music there whether or not there is no. I don't know nope um, <laughs> unfortunately no but I mean I think it could be venue specific as well there was 
issue there have been issues with venues in calgary you know just being shut down yeah. the day before shows and you go well shit what are we gonna do and yeah there are few venues in edmonton but the ones that are there are legit like there's a club called deviate in yeah. the last 10 years they've had three different locations and they're always thriving and you know why hmm. three locations i just recently rent? Uh, read an article yeah rent is fucking retarded yeah. they keep getting they can't afford it wow. no because they keep jacking it year after year they jack it jack it jack it and, and gutter punks aren't jack buying jack great it. Goose. they're just jacking it, jack it, jack it every jack year jack jackety 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 jack seth park oh yeah that's just right jacking it. just jacking it those edmontonians are just jacking well, it all the time if they're gonna be jacking it they should probably have some viva vantage paper towel that stuff's that's amazing right. it's, <laughs> that's what it's best used for it is soft you know yeah i oh, use Aaron, it to clean up on. everything <laughs> i use it to wash do you remember i don't know how many years ago it was now but bounty paper towel came out with an ad about how they were great because you can wash and wring and reuse i remember those yeah and like but it had to be like the super extra quilted bounty right. that's fucking base level viva yo okay <laughs> but that's entry level viva i found that it is very soft and it is very comfortable but strength wise it did tend to tear easier than some of the other brands oh yeah yeah like i did this whole test with did like you do a nickel wet test? water i use nickels how did you know i use nickels lucky guess and also <laughs> And also just some heavy, like, water bottles and oh, stuff, yeah? too. But I put the Kirkland's or whatever other brand I was using. And I, yeah. <laughs> and I wetted it, and I stretched it out, and I put some water bottles on it. And it held quite a bit, like $3 in nickels. And then the Viva Vantage came, and I put one water bottle on, and it was like, Bleh! it just fell apart. Yeah, yeah, you know, here's the thing for me on the Viva Vantage. Uh, when when I tested it against um, anal menstruation, right? It, what? It of course. It turns out that because there are no pockets, it really doesn't protect. Oh, <laughs> that just went. <laughs> what? 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 Huh? Did you say much? I, I didn't say anything. It's very comfortable to use, though. It's soft. It, it did, did anybody use it for, like, practical applications? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I did. My, it, yeah. my daughter was, uh, we're trying to potty train her right now, and she was not wearing a diaper and decided, I'll pee on the floor. I'll just pee. Mm -hmm. If I could, I would. It's, it's tough to potty train a child. Anyways, so I had to clean up urine with it, or human urine. And it did the trick. Yeah? I I mean, I don't know how to talk more about that. The things that I needed to clean up, it cleaned up. But I'm not really a paper towel user. I you know, am. Cloths, rags. No, I don't. I don't like a rag. I like the paper towel because I can. I get as much use out of the paper towels as I do out of a rag. But then I also get the comfort of being able to throw it in my compost bin afterwards and not have to be bothered with throwing it in my towel hamper, my laundry hamper. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's just what? way too much work. The thing is, I mean, you guys have noticed over uh, the length, the, the time that we've known each other, that I'm very much an environmentalist. Of course. And so, using a disposable product like paper towels just doesn't seem moral. Mm, but I compost them from Captain Planet over here. I don't give a shit. Mm, I don't give a shit. That sounds about right. Is that I'll use that shit. Um, I don't know. I just use rags more often. Oh. Uh, Kimberly Clark, though, the parent company, uh, makes a shit ton of money. But that aside, well, um, yeah, parent they are companies. Kleenex. So, I, oh, you know how you call... Nobody so says sense. nose tissue. Nobody says facial tissue. Nobody says facial it's tissue, wow. nose tissue. Yeah. Right? So maybe we yeah. should just call it Viva. You know? No, they Do don't have, have that Viva? foothold. They don't have that foothold well, on the paper towel market. Maybe we should start market. it. If it's the best paper towel, maybe we should just... I think Instead of is. saying, do you have some paper towel, I, we'll just say, do you have some Viva? Something about like the accordion texture. I liked how stretchy it was. That, that was made awesome. It and yeah. I think that that's one of the things that really aided my use of it. Because I would use it for washing dishes and I can wash it all up and scrub stuff without getting it on my fingers mm -hmm. but then I can just pull it out and then it's fine. Yeah. I was able to buff out my uh, my steel sinks with it with a little bit of baking soda. Shine it up. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> and then put a little lemon and salt down and I could scrub out my counters and it's all with the one piece of paper towel. Dang. And I know that some paper towels, you know, they come out 
in sheets. If a selling point for a paper towel is select a size, and that is the starting size of Viva, why the fuck would I want select a size? <laughs> That's true. And you really looked like you had something to say <laughs> I did. There. And because that reminds me of, I have a little paper towel thingy that I put it on, of course, and you tear off of it. And the thing that pisses me off the most about the other brands that I've been using is they don't fucking tear when I want to no. tear them off. And this one is just like, bloop, just comes right <laughs> off. And I really enjoyed that. Wonderful, yeah, wonderful. I did. Speaking of uh, anal menstruation, uh, Kimberly Clark also Rapes owns children. the brand Kotex. That sounds and about right. they make the sanitary absolute napkin? best tampons for anal menstruation. Oh, that's fantastic! As that you someone know that. who is menstruating right now, <laughs> I feel like your liberal use of anal menstruation <laughs> really takes <laughs> really Good. takes away from the seriousness that is my condition. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Raise your hand if you didn't know that was gonna happen. Do you mean to do you mean to tell me that anal menstruation is not a legitimate or a serious condition? Mm. You know, no, I don't think it is. I think some people might be offended that you call it a condition. Legitimate a condition? menstruation is a condition. Legitimate, that's right. I said it. That's why you've been such a bitch this episode. Yeah, go Whoa. fuck yourself. Whoa. I'm out. <laughs> this is off the rails. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it served. Why do you its think function. I drank four fingers tonight? It served its function as uh, paper towel. I don't know how to go beyond that. I really. You got. Yeah, you've never nothing. tried discount tried. bin paper towel. Next time it'll be a comparison. <laughs> All paper towel when cleaning up child's pee, unless you have a really thick portion of it, it's gonna soak through. You should have done that test Same where. Same with a rag or a cloth. I mean, you. Just, you know the one where they they absorb something and then they hold it up and they're like, yeah, see, it's not dripping. It's got to be blue liquid though. Yeah, it's only blue. got yellow. Yeah, because it can't it be yellow. yellow. Nobody wants she to look drinks at yellow. a lot of water. It was clear. Thank you. Oh. I take care of my child. That's very hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, um, man. Good choice on the paper towel, by the way. You know Mike. what, though? I would yeah. use it to clean up uh, Pup's shit. Oh. Newspaper is better for that. Yeah. Also but, I mean, compostable. it would work. It would work, you know. You can also use newspaper to buff out a stainless steel sink. The more you know. <laughs> How many you things are you using to buff, buff a stainless sinks? steel sink? Yeah, you rub it with a... Uh, uh, baking soda that's been barely diluted with water to make a paste mm -hmm. and you kind of scrub all the crap out of your sink and then you rinse it off but then you buff it with paper towel because it's the residual water that makes your sink spotty only a clean freak will walk into someone's house and say damn son you got a clean ass sink and i am waiting for that person to come to my fucking house you should share this news with my wife since i don't clean my kitchen so if you're a clean freak please look us up we'd be very interested to see what you have to say and we'd love to have you come look at our sinks thank you i don't want to i don't want to clean freak you're what's wrong no, with Canada. What I mean? almost said America. Whoa. I was this close Can to saying America. he's I'm what's wrong with America. <laughs> because I remind you more of an American than a Canadian? Mm, not expressly. I mean, I Stephen Harper was conservative and he ruled Canada for years. Yeah, and did the best job anyone's done in decades. So what's wrong with Canada and why am I it? Because you don't clean the sink. Well, I don't can't clean the believe sink. This sink gets clean cleaned. Sink. Right? I just don't personally clean the sink. Mm. You make a mess in that sink. You're not wiping up after it. I don't make a mess mm. in that sink. Oh. How do I make a mess in that sink? Well, I'm just saying, if you made a mess of that sink, you need to clean up that sink. I don't use sinks at all. Never use. A not sink. even to pee in. No, no, no. I have a whiskey drink. I have a vodka drink. And when, and when I, I gotta to pee, pee, I use, use the kitchen, kitchen sink. sink. I, I was thinking of making that one of the albums that we have to listen to. Yes. The Simpsons? Oh. The, the oh, tiny boy. I don't know any boy. other. Oh, that is the same song. Yeah. yeah what yeah. I think is... I've had a lifelong dislike of boy haircuts on girls. Okay. You would have hated me up until the age of 13. Yeah, I'll forgive you. Your hair looks good now. That's right. The The thing is, boy, I don't know. I just... It's never sat well with me. Most of the the women in my family, um, strong, powerful women in my family, have long hair, not short boy haircuts. And, and so I never really... 
appreciated it as a haircut. Still don't. Man, you're really offending our boy haircut listeners. I don't give a fuck. It looks like it looks terrible. So grow your fucking hair. Um, the wow. The point is, when I I'd watch that music video as a kid. And that I, I think they were Irish. That Irish woman, she'd go, "Oh, tiny boy, pissing the night away," and she'd have this short, blonde boy haircut. And and you didn't like that? It made me laugh a little bit because oh. it was kind of the same haircut that the the guy singing the verses had. Oh, they kind of looked. They kind of had the same hairdo. <laughs> I don't know. I've never enjoyed it. This is Chumbawamba, right? Yeah, Chumbawamba. Greatest band of all time. Greatest, <laughs> greatest band. <laughs> in human history yeah just that one song though oh. that one song made them name another song by chumbo i don't know i've never heard one that's what i'm saying just yeah. that one song that single song made them do you think the that, best band ever in history do you think being one of those bands like chumbo wumbo where they literally only have one song and then having to play shows as chumbo wumbo and the whole time the audience is going to be going to be like okay so when are you gonna, just going to play tub thump and just play it now so i can leave right. like that <laughs> that's why you make it your encore right <laughs> and so if you're that band with one hit you're just you're obviously going to play it last but would you get sick of playing it oh well yeah, i would think though it i would think though you if you're a one hit wonder i would think that you would very quickly get sick <laughs> of your one hit wonder song Yo, i just got to do a look up of this because mitch and i often talk about bands that have like one or two songs right and then we go look them up and we're like holy shit they're still making music right they're still touring yeah well yeah we reviewed one on a couple shows ago yeah some yeah. 41 wasn't it boom yeah. chumbawamba <laughs> was active till 2012 and even that blows me away they're not active now now. What? They uh, hung it up? They hung up their tub thumping rags? Maybe they just they needed to dry out a little bit. Wow. Um, I gotta say, even that surprises me. I like their names too. Um, Boff Wally was a member. And Dan Burt Nobican. Dan Burt. Boff Dan Burt, Lou Dunstan, Alice Harry, Dave Paul, Jude, Neil, Phil. And Matthew. A lot of those are normal, but Boff, Danbert, Lou, Dunstan. Those are pretty ep wicked names. What's Maybe they sound I've more normal in their native tongue. Are they not American? Chub Tub no, Thumping? They're not American. I didn't know Chumbo Wumbo wasn't American. I feel That's like. Is that obvious to you? Well, no, 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 no. Because, and people may be upset about this. But I feel like there are certain strains of punk rock that are heralding to the very, very formative years of Green Day that do not explicitly communicate a Western language primary talk. What? Huh? What? Huh? Say that again? People who try to sound like early Green Day don't necessarily sound like they're from the States. They don't they sound sounded like, like early Green Day? No. no. You're saying that they don't sound like they're from the States. People who try to emulate early Green Day, I think. So, if anything, it it wouldn't... It's less of a... You didn't know they were from the UK? Oh. Because people who emulate early Green Day do not also sound like they're from the United I, States. Okay. Oh, makes, I see. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, I see. I'm on the same Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this is why we drink. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I grew... Right. To be fair, showing my age, I mean, everybody knows the song Tub Thumper. Um, Tub Thumpin'. Oh, does it have an apostrophe? The, the album was called Tub Thumper. Yeah, the single, the song Tub Thumpin'. Um, that came out in 97. So I was older than both of you at that at that time. You're such an old man. At that time... I, Wait, it, it where? What? It what did out, you just it say? It came out in 97. It came so out in 97. I was older than you guys at that point. Which, uh, I've always been older than you guys, I guess. So that's, since when? That sense doesn't really make sense <laughs> since when. Um, all I mean to say is that, I, to me, it was obvious who was European and who was not European by that point in my life. Mm. So I guess... Maybe, maybe just because of my age at the time. You were more aware. I, my awareness of it. Um, but I, I would think that retrospect. Retrospectively, I never watched the videos or anything, though. Like, I never saw them as people. I guess if it's their accents that would have shown me, I guess, maybe. I don't know. They do have accents in the song. I never really thought Remember about it. Remember Venga Boys? <laughs> 
party bus? <laughs> hey, that was great for Six Flags. Oh yeah. <laughs> the late <laughs> the late 90s early 2000s sometimes i miss the 90s man but i miss more like the mid 90s the late 90s was where it started going off the rails mm-hmm. but um yeah i don't know where it's going oh yeah i was looking when i look back at some of the pop music back then and a lot of it was like that you know 90s um party time rave. party dance techno yeah. stuff club in like I look handkerchief back at it, tops I nobody, glitter who listens to that album who listens to those songs still someone who's like roided out at the gym are the people who are nostalgic about them god i hope so they're, they? they're gonna Maybe. be on like the uh in like song. in five or ten years from now the Venga Boys are going to be part of like a 90s nostalgia boat cruise where everybody of a certain age can go back. No doubt's going to reunite. I would pay so much money to be on that cruise. Gwen Stefani's going to shave her <laughs> eyebrows off and stop dating Blake Shelton. Who else could she come was, back? I like to No Doubt. I like Tragic Kingdom. Yeah. I bought Return of Saturn. I think Hella Good was the next one after that. And I don't know if I heard that one. I really liked the ska part of Tragic Kingdom, and I think that, you know, that again heralds down to my punk rock roots because ska goes in there of just being different. The town that I youthed in. That you youthed. I youthed Youthed. in. um, You know, people who liked ska music were like fucking freaks like oh my god what's wrong with you why do you like music when it's got like horns like what's that about like why are you wearing plaid pants that's so stupid oh my god like no wonder i'm such an angsty fucking person now jesus um (laughs) see what i find interesting is that gwen stefani looks the exact same how she looked the same other than her clothing style has changed she looks exactly the same and as a kid don't finish that (laughs) As a kid, stop you. Uh, Full Tragic stop. Tragic Kingdom had some. <laughs> Full stop. Excellent lyrics in the lyric. Yeah, don't speak. Full stop. <laughs> um, how does she look the same? She's a lot older. But her face looks the she same. She looks the same. And she's Strategic- married to Gavin Rossdale from Bush. I don't were, get that either. Was Gavin, Bush like, and Bush X different? No, same band. Did they just drop the X? Same band. There was a the there only Bush X in Canada. Oh, because there was a band in like the seventies or something called Bush. I bet there was. So in Canada, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> but you need to have a sound effect like every time you and I high five about something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the. There was a band in Canada called Bush, so they had a legal dispute, and they had to call it In Canada Bush Axe. I never knew that. I I always wondered. Extreme, like they were more extreme. There was more Bush. In Canada, they were more extreme than ever. In Canada, there was more Bush. That's why no one ever called them Bush Axe. Nobody ever called them. Sometimes I'd hear it though, and I'd be like, "What." What's up yeah, with that? Stupid. I liked several Bush songs. I Bush liked is, Gavin Rossdale I still, for a while. I still have Gliss- Glycerine comes on the radio. Yep. I, I look. I like Machine even, Head. Machine Head, so good. I just like. I just like Bush. Bush I is bet. good. Uh-huh. There's Aaron no reason to get rid Bush. of Bush because Bush has been always good, right from its inception. <laughs> and so, what I'm saying is. You just let Bush. Gavin Rosdale. Just let I Bush roam is, free. Is a <laughs> free form Bush. Yeah. <laughs> let Gavin Rosdale. I heard he likes trannies. And his Ooh. Bush roam free. Mm, the, his little, his little back knot Bush. But he, I think, I think that I'd band still is do a, Gavin I think Rosdale. That ballon, back band is knot, a, not top he knot. He looks pretty. No, it's just this is a little one. Aww. This is a little one back here. Just a little princess bride knot. Aww. It's a little one. <laughs> but they're a legitimate band. And I never understood how... That's what I never really quite understood about Gwen Stefani, was how she just went from, like, punk to pop money. Uh, From money, obviously. Yeah, Yeah, I think that the idea... And she was making money, is no doubt. But let's not overlook 
how Gwen Stefani was able to fully actualize herself as an individual when she did take the pop route versus when she was with No Doubt. Do y'all remember the uh, Don't Speak video? Don't Speak. Where it's all about like the it's Gwen Stefani being uh, stylized and put up on the pedestal by all the the because it, it's like shooting a music video but then it's the behind the scenes breaking the fourth wall oh. so it's how she's getting all this attention and then you've got the three guys at the back and I feel like that was further actualized when she did kind of just sidestep you know they didn't officially break up or disband until the last year um, but you know she had her own clothes obviously it was all about Gwen Stefani in a way I think it is now I think that she's been allowed to do that nobody ever I th it might have been something that was never said but was always kind of like agreed upon you know like Gwen is the front woman it's Gwen Stefani with these fucking guys you know that's and what I always pictured no doubt as but, but, you see but that it didn't with start most, that way oh. but you see that with most uh, right or wrong I feel like when I see a female fronted band that can I can I give one more it's just a foreshadow. 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 foreshadow I've I really would sick. never I would never do this sick. so heavy handedly but yeah. things are just they're coming together so fantastically so maybe you pick something different because now we'll have nothing to talk about no no I'm looking forward to it I want to figure out what it is anyways you'll um, never figure I it feel out like most female fronted <laughs> bands um, I get that I, you get that kind of same result, and I don't know why it is. I mean, because it's uh, so different. But you think, yeah, you think about Paramore, right? It's not named after Haley, whatever her name is, right? I think it's Williams. Haley Williams. I think Maybe. So. that sounds right. Um, they're a pretty garbage band, anyways. But that, but the thing is, they became very popular. They had a lot of big hits, and. I, I feel like nobody cares about the rest of the band. It's really it could they could call it Haley Williams and they'd be just as satisfied. Um, and then the uh, you know Flyleaf even and and I think Flyleaf is maybe not well is edging away from that a little bit. But recently they changed their their lead singer um, their their originally lead singer left and went and did a solo thing and I but I still feel like the focus was on her the guys are in the background That's, they might be talented musicians they might write their did they replace with a female background yeah because okay. that, that I feel like it doesn't necessarily only females fit that mold because they're 30 seconds to Mars it's Jared Leto's Jared, band right and you look at any band yeah. like Corn is yeah. John Davis and those fucking guys right no I don't think so I don't think so. Well, do no, I? Not I kind of do. Not with Corn, because the guitarist, what's his name? He went off and did Monkey? a bunch of No, Monkey. Head. Head did a. Everybody knew album? Head. Yeah, exactly. Everybody you know knew Head, head after he converted, no, I think. No, no, but they knew him before. I remember as, yeah, as, the as a kid growing corn. up. I remember his. No, I remember their names. I remember their names. Knowing their names. Jonathan Hedwell and Monkey. I mean, you know their names. You know who they are. That right. makes them predominantly. A, a unit? A unit. It yeah. makes them a head? With head in the <laughs> but, band? But you can know the names, like Nirvana. You can know Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic and, and... But it's still... But it's still Kurt Cobain. Yes. No, uh, the original Nightwish lineup. No, it's not. The entire band was really... Made, it was The heart of it was Thomas, the keyboard player. But it was still Tarya with these four fucking dudes, which ultimately was their downfall. You guys should be so lucky that I never bring up the original Nightwish oh. line at this my album cut because it's awful, but I love it. Huh. I hope there's not Nightwish in our future. Original Nightwish. Shit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what? Are you actually going to make us listen to a Nightwish album? Depends how much you tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> there, it could get heated. <laughs> you just ask, if there was not so much prominent foreshadowing that, to be fair, I did not orchestrate. It just perfectly just came happened. about. Just happened. It did just happen, yeah. which I'm not surprised because. It's okay. I'm okay. Album is I'll take paper. anything you throw at me. I threw at you guys, um, yeah, I, Anthony and the Johnsons last week, and you, you know it worked out well. I think one of our Still, best album discussions was Tom Petty. 
it was good. I thought from a, like a content like depth of conversation perspective. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just because it was one of the one of the ones that I and I can't. That we even, all kind of felt differently about. I and, guess so, and yeah. it was so constructive because I can't say that it was the one that I really gave a shit about because I didn't. Mm-hmm. Violator was my choice. Mm-hmm. Pup really spoke to me. Uh, Anthony the Johnsons was just so unique that I didn't know what to do with it. Um, yeah, but for some that was reason, the feeling. <laughs> it just I I I remember so vividly. As soon as I heard it, I wanted to text Aaron and be like, "Where did you find this?" I, like, and that what? made it necessitate one of my yeah. very first questions: How did this even happen? I guess that's good when it comes to music because if it's just so generic that you're just like eh, kind of bored, but it made you actually like, "What the fuck is going on?" Here? And I definitely have the background of ethereal music that it 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 blended. It would easily slip into any playlist that. I could have for like a rainy velvet afternoon, but it's still... My music still goes everywhere. It really does. All facets. It go any direction. Well, I should say that with a, a little bit of a caveat. I mean, I'm, I... You're not going to catch me listening to, like... Katy Perry? Just pure pop, yeah. I was like going to say, like, pop country. You're going to get in that genre, too. You no, know, I, I like classic country. I like some... Right. I'll listen to some Dwight Yoakam. Yeah. Some Roger Miller. I'll definitely listen to some Roger Miller. Um, <laughs> I was actually... I've been entertaining the idea several times about just pulling up some old-school country music. Old-school, like... Uh, what, what do you consider old-school country? Like, Carl Perkins? Like, um... I, damn it, I can't think of one now. Yeah. <laughs> That's because you don't listen to any classic country. I listen to some... Cl- no, I don't. I, no, I don't, don't like it, it at all. <laughs> I was going to go off, but whenever Roger Miller comes on, it's like, oh, fuck. Hologram program deactivated. Hmm.